Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine podcast, where I break down the latest scuba diving news and things that have piqued my interest underwater over the previous week. Uh, this week on the podcast, SDI have a new professional rating for instructors uh, to fill a gap in the instructor hierarchy. A boy has been bitten by a shark in an aquarium experience. Divers discovered and then had to recover human remains because the local police force doesn't have a dive team to do it so they asked the divers to do it for them and a few more underwater stories uh so jumping in with the first news story well-known bahama shark diving operator stewart's cove has launched an internal investigation and stated that it is cooperating with police after a 10 year old boy was bitten by a shark during a resort shark tank experience the unnamed boy was bitten on his right leg at around four o'clock in the afternoon on the 15th of january and was treated in hospital before being airlifted to his home state of Maryland. Police said that he was in a serious but stable condition. Stewart's Cove Dive Bahamas has catered for scuba divers from its New Providence Island Centre since 1978, but what the police described as the shark tank experience in which the boy was taking part was run through the company's separate Blue Adventures arm. A water sports concession at the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island just off New Providence. The boy, who was understood to have been staying at the resort, had been signed up for a 20 minute underwater experience called Walking with Sharks in a facility thought to contain Caribbean reef sharks and nurse sharks. No swimming experience is required as guests aged from 10 years old upwards walk on the bottom of the Mayan Temple Shark Lagoon at the resort's extensive AquaVenture site, breathing through either self contained or self-supplied sea trek type helmets they're they're like those um you've probably seen them online it's like covers your head and your shoulders and it's it's like old-fashioned um uh like astronaut kind of big glass bubble uh, on your head and that kind of stuff. Guest Tori Maisie, who was already in the tank, told NBC News that when the boy joined the group, the experience, quote, just took a dark turn. We saw the sharks home in on him and then just like a pool of blood afterwards. A dive instructor and a dive guide on duty in the tank were able to provide immediate medical attention. The facility was closed to guests following the incident and appeared to have been removed from the Atlantis website. Quote, incidents like this involving interactions with marine life, even with the species of sharks included in this experience, are rare and never acceptable, commented Stuart Cove, adding that the incident was the first in its kind since the shark tank experience began operating in 2006. So just an awful, awful experience uh, for anybody to uh, to go through, let alone a 10-year-old. Uh, Hopefully he's going to uh, to be unaffected by this um sort of physically and and mentally and um and yeah it'll be interesting to see if they uh, if they ever reopen this experience uh, i mean i've been on um uh, these kind of dives before in aquarium tanks and um y- you never really expect it because the the fish there are so used to people coming and going um throughout the tank that um yeah but still they they are wild animals and they are kept in um these um these small containers so they do go a little bit loopy from time to time so uh yeah it, it can be dangerous Scuba training agency SDI have announced a new instructor level, uh, the Elite Scuba Instructor. Um, the, they say the SDI Elite Scuba Instructor rating is designed to recognize significant experience teaching sport level diving. This certification is positioned between the SDI Open Water Instructor and SDI Course Director levels and celebrates SDI instructors that have been dedicated to teaching SDI courses. We applaud your commitment to these divers and this certification highlights that dedication. Um, How does the SDI Elite Scuba Instructor Cert work? Um, It's for SDI Open Water Scuba Diver Instructors, uh, a instructor for a minimum of seven SDI specialties, issued 50 SDI diver certifications and issued a minimum of four SDI dive master or assistant instructor certifications. Uh, yeah, so it's a little bit like Paddy has uh, uh, MSDT, master, yeah, master scuba diver trainer who can teach a certain number of specialities, but I think uh, MSDT is only five, I believe. Um, 
whereas this is uh, with this is seven, and um, issued a minimum of four dive master or assistant instructor certif um, certs. Um, that's quite nice. So um, yeah, that would be quite interesting. Um, Oh, the fees for this upgrade are the same fees all over um, as other instructor upgrades. Uh, this is a digital cert card only, uh, with this being an SDI certification certs logged with TDI already and PFI diver and instructor certs do not count towards the SDI elite scuba instructor status. Um, please see. Da -da -da -da. So yeah, a um, yeah, another cert card. Uh, if you're uh, an SDI instructor and, and you fill in that, uh, yeah, you can become an elite SDI scuba instructor. In Gibraltar, human remains discovered by sport divers in the area of the detached mole have been brought ashore by officers of the RGP Marine Section. Almost a complete skeleton has been retrieved from the seabed, including a skull which is, was in two pieces. Investigating officers are now determining if an identification is possible. And this is after, yeah, just some sport divers were, were on a dive and they, they came across these um these what looked or appeared to be um human bones um they i presume they they marked a location uh came back they alerted authorities but because the local police force doesn't have their own diving team uh they basically asked them oh okay could you go back and uh, and recover them and bring them back to us um so that we can investigate um so hey uh, that's that's one way uh, one way to go i'm surprised that there's there's no uh, no way that they can like borrow police divers from another um, sort of area. I mean, granted, Gibraltar uh, isn't that large, um, so there might not be a uh, police diving team on the islands. But at least from a surrounding partnered nation, uh, I would like to think that they call in a favour and bring in some some actual professionals to do it properly. Hey. Yeah, if you um, if you discover human remains in Gibraltar, it seems that you'll probably be asked to uh, to recover it as well. Scuba diving equipment manufacturer Fourth Element is expecting to bypass the negative effects of Brexit on UK imports with the opening of a European office and warehouse in Poland this month to serve its customers across the continent. The Polish facility will supply all EU countries, quote, with cost and time efficient deliveries, says the Cornwall-based company, and with its new facility also providing a hub for warranty, returns, exchanges, and repairs. Quote, we have gr a great network of highly professional dealers across the European Union who we value and want to support, says Ranver Jomonsen. Brexit challenged our ability to offer the support from the United Kingdom that we would normally have offered. This move enables us to offer an even better service than before with a dedicated team who not only understand our products, but are also experienced and knowledgeable in our sport. Establishing a European hub has always been our long-term strategy in order for us to support our European dealers and to succeed in a post-Brexit Europe. We just need to find the right solution, said CEO Paul Strike. The facility, which is expected to be fully operational by the end of January, is being shared with US technical diving equipment supplier Halcyon Diving Systems. I've got a, a story about them later. The two companies are said to be focusing their efforts on improving customer service and timely support support of product throughout Europe, whilst also linking with other dive partners to establish a sales force representing their brands across Europe. Quote, collaborating with Halcyon is a logical step for the two brands that complement each other and sharing some operational costs allows us to be more efficient while still pursuing our own brand strategies, said Paul Strike. Yeah, this was actually something that we were looking at at, uh, at Simply Scuba, and we, we had gotten to the stage of... Um, like we were shortlisting um like buildings and um and then covid hit and that was just the the death knell for it um yeah it, it seems to be the the way to uh, to get around brexit for uh, for british um manufacturers and retailers as well to to basically have two separate locations uh, one in the eu and one in the uk and um it, it just gets rid of a lot of complications but this would be quite interesting and uh, nice to see that kind of expansion um of a of a diving brand and um yeah partnering up with with other scuba diving brands isn't unusual you see it all the time um so uh yeah 
a, a nice positive move for the uh, for the diving industry. As far as new diving equipment, uh, yeah, Halcyon is um, is something to uh, to keep an eye on this week. Uh, we've got the uh, the boot dive show in uh, in Dusseldorf, and um, they they teased a, a snapshot of a new Halcyon rebreather. The one that they actually teased looks uh, basically looks like a, a chest mounted rebreather. Uh, but the um, the Instagram post says, "Are you ready for a revolution in diving technology? Something big is coming. Stay tuned as we're about to unveil something extraordinary: the Symbios ecosystem. This isn't just an upgrade; it's a completely new product line. Uh, the unveiling happens at Boot Dusseldorf 2024 this weekend." And it suggests that it's not just a single chest-mounted rebreather. They're also having a back-mounted and a side-mounted rebreather system. Uh, it's a whole new yeah, product line, as they describe it. Uh, so that will be very interesting. Uh, Halcyon is a, a very tried and tested brand. Uh, personally, I haven't had a lot to do with them. Um, I've, I don't think I've honestly used any of their dive equipment it's uh it's, it's just there's there's so many different brands out there that's yeah you you see a red h you see a blue h um but um no th this will be quite interesting and quite nice to see a uh, an expansion in the uh, the choices of rebreathers out there because granted there are quite a few rebreathers out there uh it's nice to see some from um from the bigger brands so um yeah that, that'll be quite interesting to see what's uh what's announced at uh, at boot Otherwise, uh, Kiss uh, from Kiss Rebreathers are having a bit of a rebrand. Uh, they um, they showed off their new like modern logo, um, but just something that brands tend to do from time to time. They just up update themselves. Mares announced a a competition uh, that uh, that you might be interested in. Uh, you have a chance to win a Mares SXS sixty two X regulator. Gosh, that's really hard to say, Mares. Um, and a digital SSI decompression diving kit uh, every day at this year's boot show from the 20th to the 28th of January. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you want a, a new set of regulators and a uh, an SSI decompression diving kit, um, yeah, then um, then yeah, you, you need to uh, sort of check that out and um, and apply. Um, the the SXS62. X is the um, the side mount or the sort of correction the other uh, side exhaust second stage regulator um, so yeah that's pretty cool and um, I think that's about it as far as new diving equipment we might see something else coming out of uh, out of boot I'll uh, I'll be keeping an eye on that but uh, but I haven't seen anything vastly new being uh, being announced online so looking at ask mark questions uh, sukar777 says uh, greetings from egypt uh, i'm a new scuba diver and when i descend to 12 meters i felt the mask was crushing my face and after the dive there was a red spot above my nose uh, although i was using my mask it wasn't too tight although i was using my mask it wasn't too tight any ideas um Thanks, and one day I hope that we can meet you in, in Egypt. Uh, yeah, I, I'd love to go back to Egypt. It may be a little while because because um, my boy's still quite young. Uh, I'm still a little bit reluctant to uh, to leave, but um, yeah, I'll um, I'll definitely head back to uh, to Egypt as soon as I can. Yeah, if you um, if you felt it if you felt it crushing into your face, the, the first thing is um, you may need to just breathe out through your nose a little bit. Uh, to relieve that mask squeeze and um, and also if you come out with a like a red mark on your forehead uh, just like between your eyebrows it may be your the mask itself it may fit well on the surface but then and when you're actually in the water and there is even a small amount of squeeze you might find that the frame is just pushing on your forehead I'm guessing it's a twin lens mask they tend to have a bit more uh, like structure between your um, between your eyes and funnily enough when I was doing my open water course um, there were three other guys on the same course as me and they'd all bought the same mask because it had this like carbon fiber detail on it and they all came out with the exact same red triangle on their forehead where the frame was pushing in because they bought it for what it looked like instead of actually making sure that it fit properly. So um, it might be the mask. Uh, it might be that you weren't breathing out and, uh, and relieving the squeeze 
of the mask because that air volume inside of the mask is going to shrink. So it's going to pull that mask into your face. Um, and yeah, it, it could just be the, the mask design doesn't fit you quite properly. So uh, yeah, I'd probably look at some uh, single lens masks just so there's a bit more space in there and um, and that should help. Um, it, it's impossible for me to, to definitively say that's exactly what it was, but I imagine that's what it was. Trent Mayer 5993 says, I'm currently working on putting together my first backplate and wing kit. Uh, I'm doing good finding the main parts, but I'm having trouble finding some of the smaller items. The hardest has been rubber belt retainers that fit two inch webbing uh, to secure harness tails. Uh, what is a good site to purchase those or is there a better option that is radially available? Uh, I presume that means readily available. Um, uh, go to your local uh, bicycle store and ask if they have any mountain bike uh, inner tubes that are um, that are going in the trash. It's um, that's that's all it really is. Those uh, those little retainer things. And um, it, it, back in the day, yeah, scuba divers would just either get their uh, bicycle inner tubes, anything with like a puncture that was impossible to repair, and uh, and yeah, they just chop it up into like half inch sections and um yeah if you don't have any uh, any inner tubes then yeah either go to your i'd probably ask my uh, my local like bike shops um just do a quick run around them uh see if there's any going um going for free otherwise it's no use to them if they can't repair it um if there's this huge hole or a rip or something in one section of the tire it's useless to them but you can use the rest of that tire to make like 20 something of them easily. So um, yeah, just uh, just get in contact with them. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the hassle, then I imagine they're pretty cheap online. Uh, just go for something uh, that's like aimed at a, a big chunky like mountain bike. Um, ideally something that you can measure that when it's flat is about or just over two inches wide. Uh, but yeah, it is just a bicycle inner tube. Uh, that's all it is really. Uh, X Deep make their own. I don't think I've ever seen them sell them as a separate item. Um, I think that they just make them for their, um, uh, for their harnesses, but, uh, but everyone else just uses, yeah, a section of, uh, of inner tube and a lot of scuba divers will bring it with them on a dive trip just in their um, in their spares bag because yeah they, they do rip and tear from time to time and um granted it is a bit of a pain on the neck a pain in the neck uh to have to unthread everything uh on the deck and uh, and thread on this uh, this section of uh, of rubber inner tubing but hey it's uh, they're, they're always useful that's why a lot of divers dive with um, like two or three and uh, but only use the top one um but yeah it's uh, it's just a mountain bike inner tube nothing nothing overly fancy uh, Rhiannon2921 says, looking to finish off my dive kit with ABCD, mainly diving local, but some travel plans for this year. After research and a visit to a dive shop where I can score some discount. Nice. Um, I've narrowed it down, but I'm stuck. Uh, Aqualung Pro HD Compact. Uh, lighter weight, rolls up well, and streamlined back inflates, uh, which I'm not used to. Unsure if this will be a dramatic change to how I feel in the water. Or a Aqualung Axiom, slightly heavier, but on all accounts folds okay. Close to a jacket feel, but a little bulky compared to the compact. Uh, do you have any advice either way? I'm leaning towards safer bit of Axiom, but uh, compact is so streamlined. Um, uh, thanks, Matt. I'm using my wife's YouTube account. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you're diving at home, I lean towards the Axiom just because you can very easily travel with it as well. The The Pro HD Compact is, it'll be great for travel because it's it's lightweight. So your, your baggage allowance will, will just be sort of so much easier. In the water, it will be nicer uh, because there's there's so little like physically touching you and even when it's fully inflated it won't be like squeezing you at all because all of the the bladder is behind you on the uh, on the compact but 
it's going to be made from that like thinner material to make it a bit lighter and you need to double check the um uh, the lift capacity um uh, for um for diving in colder waters i i don't know where you are um but chances are you may be diving some um some heavier cylinders and it might be worth having a a larger bladder on that uh whereas the axiom axiom is is more of their like flagship BCD at the moment. Uh, the, the Pro HD range is like one below it, so uh, so it, it's it's got more features. Uh, Axiom has the um, Rapture harness system, which puts the weight of the cylinder more on your like hips instead of on your shoulders, so it's a bit more comfortable out of the water. Um, but yeah, if you are diving at home uh, and those are your two choices, I'd probably lean towards the Axiom as well. It's um, it, it's a perfectly fine bcd uh it's nice good strong that will last you a good uh, blah, a good few seasons um whereas the the pro hd compact uh, i don't think it would last quite as long luke c1916 says how do i fit a bolt snap to a second stage or the hose to clip it off uh da -da 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 -da. um with but there are a couple of ways the two ways that i like is um, the, the first way is you just use some excess line from a spool. Um, I like to think that's why so many finger spools have like so much excess line uh, and sort of spun onto them. So uh, so you take off a good few meters of, uh, of that string uh, before you can use it, but keep that string, it's really useful. And, um, and yeah, wherever you sort of want it on that hose, wrap it through the eye and around the hose wherever you want it. And then between the eye of the bolt snap and the hose, tie a, um, a square knot and then on the other side, another square knot and, uh, and melt that down. That's a, a good strong way to, uh, to attach a bolt snap onto a hose. But if you do need to cut it free, you can still cut through that line. I also quite like the way of using an old O-ring or maybe even not an old O-ring, but a, um, a spare O-ring. Um, one of the skinny ones, I probably wouldn't use a, a chunky one just because they can be a little bit tough, but you basically pop, this is gonna be hard to describe, it'll be easier on video, but um, you, you pop the O-ring halfway through the eye of the bolt snap so that it creates two little bites, two little loops, and you thread a cable tie through those loops of the um, uh, the O-ring, and then you basically zip tie it to wherever you want. That way, the bolt snap is attached onto the hose, and it, the the O-ring is between the um, uh, the zip tie and the uh, the bolt snap. It's a nice secure fitting, but if you give it a real good yank, that O-ring will break and it will break free. So in an emergency, um, if Buddy suddenly comes up in an out of air situation and they're panicking and they're getting a bit grabby, they see the second stage. If it's physically tied on with um, uh, with line, then they won't. They're, they're just going to yank at it and it's not really going to go anywhere. So you're going to have to take it from them, uh, undo the bolt snap and then give it to them. Whereas if it's using the bolt, uh, the, uh, the O-ring, if they yank it hard enough, which if they've been out of air for any length of time, they're probably going to, uh, then the, the O-ring breaks and um, you keep your bolt snap, they get the um, uh, the second stage, everyone's happy, quote unquote. Um, so uh, so that's the, the two ways that, uh, that I would recommend doing it. And oh, the, uh, the same Luke C1916, uh, I'll do my dive master in a few months time and plan on trying some tech diving this year as well. My computer is at the point it's enough for recreational diving, but certainly not enough for tech. Uh, would you recommend buying a top end computer like a Perdix if I went to go into tech or should I rather buy something in between if I only do entry level tech diving? Um, I mean, I would recommend the uh, the Perdix, even if you don't go into uh, to technical diving, because it is a lovely dive computer, even for recreational. Um, is it worth getting an interim? Probably not. Um, I'd probably stick with your existing um, computer without knowing what it was. Most dive computers nowadays can do a, a fair amount. They'll definitely take you down to 40 meters. Um, 
and whilst it would be better to like start off that training with a more technically oriented dive computer it's it's not essential um your your instructor will advise you better if um, once they actually know what dive computer that you are diving with um but yeah you'll be surprised at how far a, uh, a quote unquote recreational dive computer can take you uh but saying that yeah if you do have the opportunity to upgrade to a perdix you, you won't be uh disappointed they, they are lovely lovely dive computers uh, even at the recreational level and then you're, you're getting used to how it's working and uh, and all the menu structure and all that kind of stuff you can really personalize it and get used to it so that when you do if you do move on to uh, to technical diving it's it's not that much of a, a change because you you know what most of the screen is talking about and now you've got this extra information that it's um uh, that, that it's telling you that you can then focus on as opposed to a completely new dive computer where everything is new and it can be a little bit task loading so uh, it, it's quite nice to just gradually get used to a computer and then activate the other uh, technical diving modes um but uh, that's a that's a judgment call uh, if you have the um uh, the spare cash knocking around yeah i'll always recommend a perdix um that they're one of my favorite computers and um yeah good good luck in your uh, in your dm and your uh, potential tech diving and that's it for the podcast today um gosh oh, truth it was just, if i was a little bit if i was a little bit unclear uh, at any time uh, do um, do bear with me um i i'm running on like i don't know 3 or 4 hours sleep um both both my dog and my boy um decided to um basically not sleep last night so uh, yeah it has been kind of a kind of a rough morning um but anyway yeah thank you for listening everybody um don't forget to um to check out our our website scubadivingmag.com and uh, and check out the go diving show Tickets are available if you just go to godivingshow.com. Uh, along the top, there's a little section that says tickets. Uh, the uh, the diving show this year is on the 2nd and 3rd of March in Coventry. It's at uh, NAC Stoneley. Lots to see, lots to do, lots of uh, lots of shows and uh, and guest speakers, and uh, and they're all being announced. So uh, yeah, if you head over to uh, to godivingshow.com, you can check it out. Um, otherwise, yeah, thank you for listening, everybody, and of course, safe diving. <laughs>